whenever I have my solar projector out showing the public, I thought it would be really cool to be able to show the public the solar spectrum and all the absorption lines in the chemistry of the sun. So I decided to build this one. I built one back when I was in high school. Back then I used a binocular prism and some optics that I had. And it did a pretty good job actually. So I recently built this one and I'm going to show you how you can make one too. So here's the optical layout of the spectroscope. Light goes through a slit on the far left, then onto an achromatic lens, to a 60 degree prism, and reflected back by a mirror the same way it came in. The slit is slightly offset so that the return path hits a pickoff mirror and then to the eyepiece. The focal length of the acromat determines the overall length. I found an inexpensive acromat on eBay with a 700 millimeter focal length. I wanted as long a focal length as I could find for the most dispersion, but in hindsight a shorter focal length would have been okay too. One thing I learned is not to use an airspace lens and to be sure it's AR coded because reflections off the lens can be annoying. So get a cemented lens with a good AR coating. I couldn't find quarter inch Baltic birch locally so it was ordered online. I cut two sides 33 inches long by 3.75 inches on one end and 5 inches on the other end but slightly oversized. Be sure to keep the good side out. I taped them together with 3 inches of two sided tape on each end and brought them down to the finished size together so that they were both identical. Okay, so I have the first side cut out. It's 33 inches wide. And I need to glue, glue a rib on it. And cut this rib. I ripped it on the table saw uh, to this thickness. It's, uh, I forgot what, how thick it is. It's 0.58 square. Um, and I cut the length of 32 and a half, so I'll have room for a little piece of Baltic birch on all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and, and glue this on. A little bit of bead across. And I always smooth it out with my finger. You can leave it a little bit proud, but don't go under. And it does slide around, so you got to keep checking on it. Okay, for the other side, um, cut it shorter because I need a panel, to access panel. So this length is only 28 and a quarter inch long. I put this, this rib um, is the same length as the, the opposite side one. But this one is cut off short, um, but extends over 0.58 inches because I need to screw into that for, to hold the panel in. So this goes together kind of like so. Next I cut three strips, um, three and a half, th three and a quarter inches wide. These are going to be the top and bottom and one's going to be the front and back. And again I'm going to just take some double sided tape, stick these all together and Bring them down to th three and three sixteenths. Um, kind of an odd size because I was working in millimeters before, but um, I'm going to work all three together. This one will be the, the top, and on the top there is an inch and a quarter hole for the eyepiece. 
it gets um, it's 47 millimeters over uh, from the front edge and then uh, I'll have to cut this to the length of 33 inches and this will get glued onto the to the top that is okay so I got the top cut to length and I got a quarter, inch and a quarter hole in the right spot so I'm ready to glue the top to the side And then after that's dry, it's time to put on the the third side, or the the, the side, not not the top. Um, and I hope it goes a lot smoother than the last time. <laughs> Let's go again. But I gotta squeeze it the other way, and I have some pieces that I cut off to stick into here. Spacers, make sure that the bottom is the same. made one little mistake on um, this piece that was across here um, it shouldn't be there so I just cut it off and glued it back here the, the panel that, that closes this needs four places to, um, to for the screws to go into uh, I did have to make uh, a glue on the little little piece here for the screw to go into and this is this end plate I glued on, I cut it to the right dimensions, cut, uh, glued it on, and also nailed it with brads into three three of the corners. So now the um, the side plate will go on here, and it gets it's drilled and screwed and go, goes into that. All right, so I've got the. Uh, panel here screwed on. I haven't received the dovetail yet so I can't go any further with this. This is actually the bottom piece. But the ne next thing I'm going to have to do is work on some of the internals. have an aluminum tubing to mount the lens on and it'll go in here and it'll slide back and forth kind of like a Crawford mount for focusing. First I need to get the lens. The aluminum tape needs to be equal distance from the two sides and the top using V-blocks. These are just wide enough to sit between the ribs and space the correct distance with a shim. Once I get the lens that will go between the ribs with a piece of Teflon tape the tube is pushed against the V-blocks with this piece 
It has a quarter twenty set screw, three eighths inches long, a spring, and a piece of one quarter inch Teflon. To move the tube back and forth for focusing, I bolted a little piece of Delrin, which has a tap hole for a 632 threaded rod. However, the hole must be outside the diameter of the lens, which is larger. I didn't have a lens hole, so I put a ring of aluminum tape around the lens, then pressed it down around the tube, keeping it centered. A very simple solution. I had measured the back focal length and made a mark on the rib and placed the V-blocks such that the tube can move back and forth uh, plus or minus 10 millimeters um, on the threaded rod. I made a support block with a quarter 20 threaded insert, glued it to the bottom panel, then attached the bottom with number three by one half inch wood screws. Then I sanded everything down and varnished it inside and out. For the front panel, I wanted an eighth inch slot and I don't have a mill, so I split the part in two. Then I used a file to file a bevel on each side and form the gap, which is kind of a coarse slit. On the back side, I used two strips to reinforce it and it also forms a holder for the slit. The pickoff mirror mounted on a little square of maple plywood holding a bracket of 60,000 stainless steel bent as shown. You need to be sure that the height of the mirror is slightly lower than the opening to the coarse slit. You can rotate the, the bracket and you can also bend it for alignment. The prism is mounted with two-sided tape on a disc of hardwood 0.93 inches thick. A center screw holds it in place and allows the prism to be rotated. The mirror rotator construction is shown here. The lever arm has Teflon tape on one side, writing on ebony star for low friction, and the other side has 0.020 thousandths of urethane for high friction. The lever arm is pushed by a 632 screw and spring, but it can be manually moved for coarse adjustment. The base is mounted down with a little bit of two-sided tape, and the mirror is mounted on the bracket with 3M mounting tape. So here is the finished back end of the spectroscope showing the tilt angles of the prism in the mirror and also the wavelength and focus knobs. For an eyepiece holder I cut a donut out of cherry wood with a inch and a quarter inside diameter and tapped a set screw for it before giving the whole spectroscope a coat of varnish. The pickoff mirror is centered underneath the eyepiece holder and mounted with 3M tape. Here's how I made a fixed slit for the spectroscope. It was a bit tedious. When finished, I taped it behind the opening and the slit in the front with aluminum tape.